can see many people coming. Yeah, I wanted us to hear the two good ones. We're starting at uh, 10 o'clock, uh, five minutes, five minutes. Yeah, um, three more minutes, then we'll stop. Three more minutes. minutes. Yeah. Oh. Morning, people. Good morning. I see a lot of people. Morning, just morning. Up and jump. Um, but you know, I I saw some people say um they raised their hand last week and didn't uh get answers many times. So uh, let me create a Google form for you. So for students, you want to ask questions, but um. You didn't get um, answered. You can use the Google form, and we can answer the questions uh, after yeah. the class. Okay, okay. Okay, Is that good okay. for you, Ida? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, if oh. anyone has a question, you can fill your question in the Google form, and uh, if I'm free, I will answer that question. Uh, yeah, fantastic. That would be great, Jeff. Perfect. Cool. All right, we'll start in a minute. Um, we're close to 200 now. A little bit for us to join in. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe uh, we can start now. <laughs> Hello, guys. Go right ahead, man. Welcome to my class. And this is week four. I'm Prophet, and, and I'm the supervisor of a uh, com com community. And I come from White Matrix. Uh, about this week, we are going to discuss about the Solidity Grammar and the smart contract. Last week, our CTO, Mr. Tim, has, ha, had introduced briefly about the smart contract and the Solidity. But I guess some of you uh, just not understand clearly and still feel confused. So at this week, I will talk about the uh, Solidity Grammar and the Smart Contract in detail, and we will do some practice. So uh, maybe let's start today's class. Okay, following are the content of uh, this week's class. The first part is about the Smart Contract. At first, we will make an introduction of the smart contract and about its characteristics, its capability, and how it works, and about its use case. And the second part, we will introduce about the solidity. I will detailly introduce the solidity uh, history and uh, uh, its data variable data types and its uh, variable types, and how to build a function and the detail about the function, like the function modifier, or uh, and about the events, uh, something like that. So, uh, if somebody still feel confused or feel unfamiliar with the solidity, just don't worry about that. Uh, I will talk in detail. Okay, so let's start with smart contract at first. <laughs> Uh, in 1997, Nick Sabo proposed a conception of smart contract. The smart contract is just like a real-life contract, but in digital. And uh, because it's based on the blockchain, so it has no need for the third party. And the other thing is, uh, as, 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 some, as some teacher just told you guys a few weeks ago, 
that the smart contract is based on the blockchain, uh, which uh, popular is BSC or Ethereum. So uh, the smart contract has the same feature as the blockchain, like it can't be tampered with and its uh, store is decentralized. So let's uh, let's discuss about the characteristics about the smart contract. The first thing about smart contract is it can be programmed. Every logic about smart contracts is programmed inside the smart contract, and the smart contract will automate it, uh, execute the code that you code in if the condition uh, was met. Uh, the third thing is about is enforcement. Because the enforcement is based on the blockchain technology. So you don't worry about the, the, whether the smart contract will be executed or not. Uh, as, we, uh, as the Wu Xiao told you guys in the first week, that blockchain is a machine that creates trust, right? So you have uh, we can we can make uh, agreement between users that the smart contract can execution by itself. And the third, the four things uh, is about it. Uh, the smart contract are tamper proof. That this is also based on the blockchain feature because blockchain are decentralized and cannot are tamper proof, so it cannot change. Uh, by uh, every single people or single per single node. Uh, and here we are going to talk about the capabilities of the smart contract. The smart contract can automate it process because it's based on the blockchain. And once you deploy it, your smart contract to the blockchain, you have no need to uh, manage it or uh, just like put it in your own uh, computer, you have to manage it, right? But if you put the smart contract on the blockchain, it will uh, automated process. It will be an automated process. And the second thing is it can ensure the security. The security is ensured by the decentralized and uh, the blockchain technology. The third thing is the smart contract can reduce the relations to middlemen. If something that related to the middleman, it will cost more. Uh, it will take some fees, right? And the third thing is a smart contract can manage a user's agreement. Uh, th this part I have been told in the earlier slides, so I won't repeat it here. And uh, last, the smart contract provides ut utility to other contracts. About this part, um, if one smart contract provides the visibility, uh, like public, and it provides a function that can be used by other contract. Then other contract can just use uh, the function that has code in the in, in in some other contract that they want to use. So they can just use uh, each other's function. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about how smart contract works. So smart contracts works runs in the blockchain and the smart contracts uh, are contains a lot of rules. So if you, if you deploy a smart contract on the blockchain and someone just trigger the condition, then the smart contract will be executed. That's the whole process how the smart contract works. Uh, and now I'm going to talk about the smart contract anatomy. About the smart contract anatomy, uh, anatomy, uh, the smart contract can is open source, right? So everyone can see the smart contract code. Uh, there are two advantage of these things. The first thing is if anybody, if anyone can just check the code of the smart contract they can know uh, how it works and its usage, right? Uh, they can know in detail about uh, its code. So it, it can make uh, people to believe in about the smart contract. And the second thing is, uh, if the smart contract can be 
check or verified by some other people, the security of the contract can be verified. So the contract is the most security that where the contract have. Okay, about the smart contract use case, uh, I think smart contract can be used like everywhere. So if uh, like Amazon use smart contract for the supply chain management, and the uh, I think Facebook create its own smart chain called Libra, right? And many uh, other companies just use smart contract to do uh, some different things. I think if the blockchain can provide uh, the enough transaction support, every traditional transaction can be migrated to the blockchain. So don't worry about the use case of the smart chain. Okay, after the smart chain part, uh, I'm going to introduce about the Solidity. Okay, the Solidity is the programming language of the smart contract. As you know, there are many programming language of the smart contract like C++ or Go or JavaScript or something else. But uh, the smart contract is the most commonly used uh, programming language in the world. Uh, smart contract is an object oriented and a high level programming language, which means uh, it can use the class, uh, the class uh, characteristic and uh, inheritance. So, and the library, I guess. So uh, with this kind of programming language is can achieve the complicated function. And the smart contract is derivative or influenced by the C++ or Python and JavaScript. Uh, and its design target is to uh, make a service for the uh, EVM virtual machine, uh, which means EVM. So there are some unique design for to serve the uh, EVM. And also, uh, Solidity is a statically type language, which means every single type variables that should be uh, declared when you are programming the code. And uh, the other thing is before you deploy the uh, program, you should compile it first and everything will be settled down when you comply it. So with Solidity, you can do many things with Solidity. You can uh, build a voting program or a crowdfunding program or some information uh, change program or something like else. So there are many things that can, you can do with Solidity. Okay, uh, about the right picture is uh, Solidity icon. And uh, at the left, I just show an example of the Solidity file. There are several parts of the Solidity, uh, Solidity file. I will introduce about them one by one uh, at the following slides. Okay, at first, I'm going to introduce you guys about uh, uh, compiler version settings. So the Solidity file uses pragma keywords to, uh, to define the Solidity compiler version. There are three ways to define the compiler version. I made the syntax at the right. Uh, the first is we can define a specific Solidity version. Like if we want to define the Solidity version is 0 uh, 0.6.0. So we can directly just write a, a, a 0 0.6.0 here. So uh, with this line, the Solidity, the, this Solidity file will be complied by the uh, 0 0.6.0 compiler. And the second 
is if we want to uh, if we want this solidity file can be programmed in a range version of the solidity compiler, then you can set like this. Uh, with the, with this auto pick, uh, we can set this file uh, compiled by a range compile version, uh, which this this sentence means uh, the this file can be can be compiled by the solidity compiler uh, more than more or equal than the zero point six point zero, but less than zero point seven point zero. And the third way is the uh, easy way that you can understand because it's use an operator uh, to limit the uh, solidity compile version. So with this, uh, this, this, this file that can only be compiled by the solidity compile uh, more or equal uh, than the 0 0.6.0, but less than the 0.7.2. Okay, and uh, like other programming language, Solidity uh, has different data types, just like C++. Because if we want to store different type of value that we need to use different data type, like if we want to store a, st a string value that we need to use a string data type, right? The first data type I want to introduce to you is integer. Okay, there are two types of integer uh, in Solidity. The first type is signed integer, and the second type is the uh, uh, unsigned integer. The signed integer uh, can store the value of positive and the negative, but the unsigned integer can only save the positive value. Uh, and uh, not more than, uh, and, uh, not only the difference with sign and sign, uh, there are some difference with the length. So if you want to declare a 256 bytes uh, variable, you need to declare it as uh, u int, 250 and six, right? But if you want to declare an unsigned int with eight, the eight bytes length, then you need to define it at uh, like u int eight. The different languages ha have, have some difference. So if you use the short length, uh, short length variable, then you will use less gas fee when you change it. So when you define a variable, you need to take care of two things. The first is is unsigned or unsigned, or is signed or unsigned. And the second thing is about its length. Uh, I take a uh, example here. Maybe you guys can learn it by yourself. Okay, the second type is the Boolean. Okay, the Boolean is the, uh, is the type that store true and false. And it, this is a very commonly used in our daily programming. So the Boolean variable can be operated by the logic operator. And uh, the logic operator like uh, logic negation or logic conjunction uh, or logic disjunction. So there is a syntax. When we want to define a Boolean variable, we use the bool keywords. And we can use the bool keywords and uh, following by the bool names, uh, bool, bool variable name. And uh, we can assign, we can assign uh, the, bool, the bool variable by true or by false. And uh, in the below, below program, we can see there is a yellow part right here uh, in the quote. We defined a B, uh, we defined B equal to 10. So if the B less than 20 is true, then this true is a Boolean variable that will return to the if function. Then the if function will do the following codes. 
we execute the following code. Uh, but if the B is not, is not less than 20, uh, then it will return a false to the if function. Then the if function will do something different. So, okay. The third thing is about array. Uh, when you want to uh, define or store a collection of something, and uh, those something is in the same data type, maybe we will use the array data type. The array data type have two classification. The first is the fixed array, and the second is the dynamic array. So the fixed array is means uh, the array with a fixed legends and uh, the array should uh, be defined by a uh, type and its legends. And the dynamic array, which means it has no fixed size. The dynamic, the, dynamic, the dynamic array was controlled by the push and the pop function. So when we want to define the array, we need to use the type of the array and uh, with a middle bracket. If you want to define a fixed array, there should be some number in the uh, middle bracket. But if you want to define a dynamic array, there should be empty. Okay, uh, then we just discuss about the enums. Uh, the enums uh, is a restrict to one of only a predefined values, which means predefined values. Uh, when we want to define a enum variable uh, data, that we should uh, define a enum data type first, like, uh, like we code in the syntax. At this, at, at this example, we just define an enum called gender, and the gender has three options. The first is male, the second is female, and uh, the third is I prefer not to say. So if you want to assign the enum uh, variable, you should uh, choose one of these uh, one of the three uh, value in this predefined values. So you can choose male or you can choose female, or you can choose just choose I prefer not to say. So the enum can be used by the uh, choose of some predefined values. Okay, then I'm going to talk about a very interesting, uh, interesting is the structure. Uh, at last, at, uh, at the above slides, I just talk about array, right? If we want to store some collection of the same data type, then we will use array. But if we want to store a, a, a collection of different data type, what should we do? The solidity provides a solution that is structure. Okay, if we want to store the student information, the student will have a name, right? It will have a um, age, or it will have a gender. Uh, it will have a dress, or something like that. So those uh, those information are different data type, right? So if we want to store a student information, maybe we can use the structure. The structure uh, data in the solidity a file should be defined by the struct, struct keywords. And we use a big parenthesis to uh, define the struct. We can put some variables that we want to store in the stored in, in the student information in the big uh, in the big parenthesis. Like here, we put an integer and we put a string and we put an uint. So if we want to store something uh, that's a different type of the collaboration, uh, we can use the structure. Okay, uh, here is a very interesting things of the solidity. Solidity provides a structure, names mapping. 
Mapping, in fact, is a hash map. It's not like array that have uh, understripped. The mapping use a type a structure of key to the value to locate it the value. Like, like here, uh, we have an uh, example. We defined a variable named user level, right? User level. Uh, we, we need to know uh, which user has, which, uh, has what level. So the user level is defined by the address. Address is the key type and the uint is the variable type. So you can search or define the user level by the user's address. Like this, we set a function which name is set current level. We want to set some user's level. So we defined a uh, way we code here. Uh, we assigned the level to the user level. Uh, this is a mapping variable. And the, there, uh, in the middle bracket, we fill in the user's address. So after this, uh, after this sentence, the level just store in the position uh, of the user's address in the user level mapping variable. Okay, so we stole at first, but what if we want to get it out? Uh, it's the same way. We can see here, there is a, another function. We want, to, uh, we want to collect the level that we, we just stored in, right? So here we put, uh, we, we just input a user address at first, and we use this user address to search for the level that it's stored in the use level variable and it will return the addressed corresponding level. Okay, that's how it works. And uh, we just talk about address, right? Address, in fact, is a unique conception of the solidity because of the structure of the, uh, of the ethereum. So address means the account of somebody, right? So if you want to transfer the money from one account to another account, account you need to know about its address. So address have, has a very specific data language limitation. It should be 40 character, characters and uh, it should be uh, start with the uh, uh, zero X, right? So. If you want to define a address variable, you should use the address keywords. And the address variable has some different things. Uh, address variable is, in fact, when you define address variable, it can use some global variable feature like this. You can use a dot balance to use is a balance function. It will get its uh, its balance of this account. And you can use transfer to transfer uh, the money from one account to another account. So address, in fact, is a very uh, innovative, innovative uh, creation of the solidity. Okay, and here is the comments, right? Uh, comments is just uh, like in every every lang every programming language, we use comments to write down something some text information at about the about the code or about the project. So we want to use comments uh, to let the pro program to more readable. If you want to comment something at first, you can use a double slash. A uh, double slash is used for a single line comment. And if you want to make a long comment, uh, a multiply comment, you can use uh, a slash and with uh, aster, aster, ha aster hash, I, I don't know how to call it. Okay, you can use this sign and uh, a slash. So with this, you can define a multi-line comment. So here is an example of how to uh, how to define a comment here. 
And with every example or syntax, you can see some blue word here, right? Okay, this is a reserved, uh, reserved word for the solidity uh, language. You can't use those reserved words to define a, a variable name or something like that. You need those part is used in the solidity programming. Okay, after uh, after the data type. Okay, here we are going to talk about something about the variable type. What's variable type? So variable type is connected with where the variable will be stored. If the variable store in the blockchain, it will be the state variable. Like uh, if you declare the variable and you want it to store on the blockchain, then you should declare it as a state variable. And if you want, if you don't want it to store on the blockchain, and if it's just used in some function, you can just declare it as a local variable. So if you change a state variable, it should cause some fees. But if you just change a local variable, you don't have to cost for that. So there are some uh, state variables uh, syntax. If you declare uh, if you declare a variable just outside of the function, but in the contract, it will be a state variable. But if you declared a variable in the function, then it will be the local variable. Uh, besides the uh, local variable and state variable, there is another kind of variable, which mean, which which name is the global variable. The global variable contains some blockchain information. So you can collect the, con the blockchain information by using the global variables. Like I, I take a picture here. You can use the block difficult, difficult but to collect the, the block difficult of the current block. Or you can use the gas limit, uh, this block dot gas limit to get the current block uh, gas limit. So uh, this kind of variable is widely used when you want to collect some feature, uh, information of the blockchain. And here I'm going to discuss about the variable scope. Uh, variable, sc variable scope of local variables is limited to the function in which they are defined. Uh, but the state variables have three types of scopes. A uh, three type is public, internal, and uh, private. So this scope defines where you can use these variables. Like if you divide the variable uh, of public, then you can use this variable in the contract or uh, in other contract, you can use it both. But if you use the internal scope, then you can just use it in the, in the contract or its inheritance. Uh, but, and if you use the private scope, then you can just only use it in current contract. So the variable scope will influence the area that the variable can be used. Okay, here I'm going to talk about the operator. There are many operator uh, in the solidity language. Uh, we can uh, we can just classify it uh, to to five classification. The first is asthmatic operator, which is about the mass. It will be like minus plus mode or power, uh, something like that. So we can use uh, arithmetic operator to operate the integer integer variables. And uh, the second is the comparison operator. The, co the comparison operator can operate the Boolean, Boolean variables. And the, the also is the logic operator. The comparison operator can also 
can also be used for the integer, integer variables. And second is the logic operator. The logic operator I just mentioned uh, when I talk about the Boolean variables, right? The logic operator is commonly used to operate the Boolean operator. Like you can use and if there are two true, uh, there is if there is an and between two true variables, then the result will be true. Uh, if you use an and operator, okay. So the fourth operator is the assignment operator. The assignment operator is to assign something. Like if you want to assign a for something, you, you can uh, a equal to one, then you assign one to a, okay. And the, the fifth uh, the fifth operator is a condition operator. Uh, you can use a question mark uh, to, to achieve a function like if. Uh, you put one condition uh, to to the after the question mark, and if the condition met, it will execute X, and otherwise it will execute Y. Okay. After the operators, I'm going to talk about the control structure of the solidity. The first things I'm going to talk is about the loop. Okay, the loop is. Uh, there are three types of the loop in solidity uh, is while and while and for loop. So I will introduce them one by one. The first thing is the while loop. Okay, if you want to use, if you want to execute some statement or code that will re repeatedly as long as an expression, then you can put uh, the code in a while loop. The while loop will check the condition first. If the condition is met, it will go inside the uh, while loop and execute the code in the big parentheses. But if it's not, uh, it will uh, come out and uh, just skip this while loop and just execute the code following. The second is the do while loop. The mainly difference between while loop and the do while loop is uh, the while loop will check the condition at first and the do while, uh, the do while loop will check the condition at last like this. The, while, the do while loop will execute the statement at first and then check the expression. If the expression is not met, uh, then it will just uh, continue and uh, do not come back to the do and execute the statement uh, and do not execute the statement uh, repeatedly. Okay, the third classification of loop is the for loop. The for loop has three, uh, three important parts. The first is the loop initialization. And uh, the second is the test statement, which is the condition that where uh, that uh, the when the loop will be end. Then the third is the iteration statement. Okay, uh, at first, before a for loop start, you need to initialize about this variable. Like here, okay, we, we, we defined a int variable, which name is i, and we initialize it with the zero, right? And the second, the second thing is when will the loop execute? If i is less uh, or equal of 10, then the loop will be executed. This is a condition of when the loop will be executed. Okay, the third is the iteration statement. The, the iteration statement, which means after every loop, the iteration statement will execute. Like here, after every loop, uh, like after the first loop, the i equal to zero, right? But after the first loop, i were uh, plus one. So at the second loop, the as the second loop, the i will be equal to one. So that's the iteration statement. 
So I, I just talked about uh, how many loop classification uh, in the solidity. And now I'm going to talk about how to skip the loop. Uh, if you want to skip the loop for once or just skip, uh, just skip this iteration or just skip the whole loop, there are two ways to skip. The first is a continue. If you want to skip just uh, this iteration and it will come back to the beginning of the loop. So you, when you want to skip this, you can, this iteration, you can use the continue. But if you want to just uh, come out of this loop, you can use the break. And uh, when the programming execute to the break, it will come out of this loop. Okay. Uh, the third thing uh, is about the if else, okay, the control structure. The if else construct, uh, control structure is about how to uh, make, how to do the condition, condition choosing, right? Like if we want to choose uh, the condition that A met here, we, we made a syntax. Uh, we want A more than B, and a more than c, then we will execute that result equal a uh, result a assignment to the assigned to the result, right? But if this requirement is not uh, this requirement is not met, then it will come to the else. And there is another if after the else, so it will just check oh this condition is met or not. And if this condition is met, then it will execute this. But this, if it's not, then it will come to another else that uh, corresponding to this if. So if and else is a structure that do the condition checking. Okay. Okay, so here is the very important part of the solidity. Uh, it's about the function. The function is a group of reusable code. Like if you want to define the function of add, you want to input two variables and you want to add it and uh, come and just output one result, right? If you want to do this repeatedly, then you can just define the function. So uh, if you want to do something that's repeatedly, or the function will be used to a lot of where, then you can use, then you can define the function to do, to do those things. The advantage of a function is you can depart the whole contract to several uh, independent function. It will easily to management the whole contract. Okay, like I just show here, I, I have a syntax of the how to declare a function. When we like to de declare a function, the first thing is we use the function keyword to declare it. And the following is the, is the function name. Then we use a quote. Inside the quote is the input parameter. And then we will use some modifier uh, and the visible modifier like public or view or pure, I will introduce in later slides. Okay. And uh, we will use a returns if we have something, if we have some output parameters. If not, then we just skip this part. Okay. Uh, the function is a reusable, uh, is a reusable code part, right? And the constructor is some kind of function, but the constructor will just invoke the once when the contract is deployed to the blockchain. So the constructor will only be executed once. If you want to do something when you create the contract, just uh, fill in the statement in the constructor. And here is the syntax of the constructor. Uh, the constructors visible should be public because when you deploy something, then uh, the others will uh, use this function. So the functions visible should be public. 
And if, if you have some statement of the constructor, just fill in, in, in the bigger parentheses. And we talk about function, right? But I haven't talked about how to, uh, how to define the modifier of the function. The function have uh, two modifier uh, in solitic language, it's like pure, uh, a three modifier, in fact, uh, like pure and view. The pure function uh, is the function that will no use of the guess and no return. So the pure function will just do some calculation on the EVM. The pure function disallows the modification or, or set of the state variable. So if you change any state variable in the function, the function can't be the pure function. There are several limitations of the pure function in the following. So you guys can check if the function uh, just uh, met uh, these limitations. Okay, the second is the view function. The view function is the function when you want to return or you want some outputs that you can read, you can use the view function. View function, because if you use a view function, you will see the feedback in the React window on the website. So, uh, and the view function still disallow the modification of the state. Like I just said, it can't change the state variable status. And there are still some uh, limitation of the view functions. Like you can't modify the variables, you can't uh, emit events or create other contract like this. Okay, the pure and view is the modifier that defined by the solidity language. But if you want to define some modifier by yourself, you can use the modifier keywords. The modifier keywords provides a way that everyone, every coder could uh, modify the function by themselves. Uh, like here, we want to define a modifier that the function can only be used by a specific person like who create the contract, uh, how should I shift it, achieve that? We can use the modifier keywords to create the modifier. And the, the, it has name like only owner. Uh, and we use the require, uh, the require function to make a condition, which is the message sender who, who, who creates this transaction should equal to the owner. The owner, uh, the owner can be the one who created this contract or can be, uh, can be some address that who own this contract, right? So with this modifier, the function can only be used by a specific person. Uh, the modifier is automatically check, uh, the, the modifier can automatically check a condition uh, when you want to execute a function. So it helps a lot when you are coding. Uh, I just talked about the visibility of the variables, right? And now I'm going to talk about the visibility of the function. We just, we just, I just introduced uh, you guys about the public, internal, and the private. It's the same as here, and there is an, uh, there is. Uh, one new one called external, uh, which means external. External means if this function visible is external, you can only use this function in other contract, not on this contract. If you use this, con if you use an external function in the current contract, the compiler will uh, give you an error. So, uh, if you want to define some function visibility, just be careful. Okay, uh, maybe we'll come to the last of the introduction of the solidity. Uh, solidity is based on, is designed for the EVM, right? EVM is not like our own computer. If we program on our own computer, we can just use uh, like print or like 
count to output the log, right? But if we want to check the program executing status on the EVM, what should we do? Okay, so Solidity provides a solution, uh, which is events. The events uh, will store some output of the status uh, on, on of every function. Like if you, if you define an uh, event, which name is high speed increased. If you want to if you want to record some high high speeds, you can use this event to record. And you can define some variables in this code. You can define like the bidder's address. Okay, the, the high speed is how, how much is it? Okay, so you can use a uint to, uh, to define it. And you can use an index. You can add an index here. Uh, so if you add an index, index here, uh, the people uh, on the EVM can just search these events by the index. And after you define the event, you can use it by the emit, emit keywords. You can put an emit sentence in a function. Then when the function uh, execute this emit sentence, it will send a log to the EVM. And after this process, the people can uh, search for the log on the EVM. With the events, uh, people can see, uh, people can understand the status or can listen the status of the contract and can be easily to uh, adjust it or just uh, make some adjustment. Okay, uh, here is the whole part of the introduction of smart contract and uh, solidity. So I'm going to uh, make an example how to build a smart contract from start. And maybe it will help you guys to finish this week's assignment, right? Okay. Uh, as as the same, we open the we open the we open the chain BSC ID at first, and uh, we can create a new project maybe. Okay, we create a new project. So at first, we come to a new project. We need to uh, create a file at first. We create file by selecting uh, this this button. Okay, then we can just uh, fill in our file's name, like assignment one. Dot sol because uh, the solidity file should end with the uh, uh, sol. Okay, as I just talked in the slides. Uh, the first things about the solid file is we should define its uh, compiler version, right? When we want to define a compiler version, okay, we, we can use the pragma, pragma keywords and following by the solidity. If you print the code correct, those words should be blue, okay? And uh, I will use a range version like 0 0.6.0. Okay. Okay. This means this file will be compiled, uh, use the compiler uh, more or equal than the 6 point, uh, 0 0.6.0, but less than 0 0.7.0. Okay. So I will, uh, I will set a comment which when I want uh, this, this solidity file is about how to store a uh, student's information. So if I want to store a uh, student information, I will use the data type that structure, right? Structure. So the first thing is we will build a structure.
Okay, and uh, we will use this structure to store the student information and, and retrieve it. Okay, so I will make a contract at first, create a contract, right? The contract created by, uh, by the contract keywords and the following by the contract name. Okay, I will use the test maybe. Okay. And here I'm going to create a structure, structure variable, right? So I will use the struct S E R U C T. Okay. The struct name is student. Of course, this struct is used for stu store the student's information. Okay, we'll use the big currencies to store the struct information. Uh, and the student will have some uh, characteristic like number, number. If we want store number, okay, we will use the uint. The uint is equal to uint 256. So we will define the uint variable at first and uh, the name should be number. The second is maybe about the student's name student's name, if we want to store name, we will use a string variable maybe. And then the third is uh, if we want to store a student's um, gender maybe, okay. If we want to store a student's gender, maybe I can use a bool, uh, is male or not. Okay, here I just finish the creation of the structure. But if we want to create a structure variable, it's not the end. We should create a struct variable. So we create a structure first. The struct name is student. And if we want to create a specific variable, then we should put like this. The first is we, uh, we type the student. And we're following by the variable name, like the first student, okay, student one. Okay, here I just declared a struct variable. And uh, I'm going to set the information of this student one, uh, the first student variable, okay, the function. I have to declare a function, UNCTION. Uh, the function name is uh, set information. Okay. And it's following by a quote. The quote in the quote, we should fill in the input parameters. Uh, the student information includes three parameters, right? The number, the name, and uh, its name. So I will put it inside here. You int. And uh, uh, the, the parameter is used inside the function, right? So it's a local variable. If you want to use some local variable, I prefer to uh, use an underscore here. And uh, the same name, number. Okay, the second thing is the name. It type a string. When you want to input something and make an assignment, the variable type should be as same as you just declare in the structure, uh, in the structure. So that's the same things. I just uh, declare the three variables here. So we want to use this function. You should uh, put three input parameters inside the, uh, when, you, when you want to use it. Okay, the second thing is the, the visible of this function should be public, right? Because if you want to use it, it should be called by the interaction of the contract. So everyone can call it. So the visible of this function is public. And uh, maybe, okay, that's, that's the end. Okay. So, uh, inside the function, we need to code the statement. The statement is we need to make an assignment of the first student variable. Okay, student first 
uh, number equal to number, right? Hello. And the, hello. Yeah, so sorry to cut you short. Um, but some users are, um, some students are asking that you zoom your screen a little bit. The characters are very small. My character is too small. Like uh, if I, if I. This is better. This is better? Okay. I hope you can see it now. Chat if you can see it, yes or no. Okay, I can, I can just check. Aha, uh -huh. I think it's, it's bigger now. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead, please. So, uh, I have set the number, right? Uh, the second is the name. So, I just put name here. And the assign assignment, the underscore name variable to the student first the name uh, variable. Okay, the third is the pool, pool variable, the is male, right? Okay, student first. Okay. Uh, and uh, one thing that we need to remember is when you want to use an array or a mapping or uh, some uh, some reference type of the variable, then you need to declare the variable is stored in the memory here. All, all, the, all the compile were just written arrow to you when you compile it. Okay, this is the set information process of the, uh, when you want to store the information of the student first. Okay, so when you interact with this, this function, then you set the information. And the second thing is you want to retrieve it, retrieve the information. Okay, so we, let's, let's define the second function, which is the here. Uh, so in the get information, we have no need for any uh, input parameters because uh, there is nothing that we need to input. Okay, and uh, the visible of the of the function should be public because we need to interact with it. Okay, and the third thing is we need to uh, define this pub, this function with the view modifier because we want to see the result that this function return. So if we want to see some result of the function, we need to set the function to the view modifier. Okay, and we need to define the returns uh, parameters. The first is the same as is the same as those. Okay, we can just we can just define this type here without its name, or you can define the name too. Yeah, it's okay. So after this, we can use the return keywords to return the uh, to return the structure value value. Student first, dot number, student two, a student first, dot name, and a student first, dot is male. So we we'll finish here. Okay, after this process, we just, okay, we just, okay, we just finished the coding. So we need to compile first. Okay, we, we come here and uh, the compiler is, should fill this, should meet this requirement, right? So uh, 0 0.6.12 is fill this requirement. So we can just click the compile assignment, click it. And wait for a few seconds.
Oh, oh, something wrong. Okay, okay. I just forgot this this memory here. If you if you face something error like like here, you can you can if you if you face something error, then you can see the details about the error. Here, uh, it points out that there is something wrong with the twenty lines. Twenty lines is here, right? And uh, the fifty-seven uh, character. So. Uh, as I just mentioned, if you use the string or some reference type like array uh, in the input or output parameters, you should add the memory here. Then, okay, then maybe you can compare success. Okay, okay so now we can deploy e this uh, contract. Okay, let's wait for minutes. Uh, for its deployment. Okay, it's success. So the first things of the contract is we have to set the information at first, right? So the first thing is we need to set this number. I, I guess the number could be one. Okay, the, the window here will hint you how, what kind of uh, value that you should uh, input. You should fill in like here. You should fill in a stress a string value, right? String value. So maybe uh, and the third is you should be a bool value. Bool value can be true or false. Okay. So after you fill in all of the all of the form, then you can just click the submit. Okay, uh, it's success. And now the information uh, have, has been stored in the blockchain and uh, you can just retrieve it by this function, get information. You can click the get, okay? And here is the number and the name and the gender, okay? So this is the whole process for creating a contract. I hope this, uh, this process can help you to finish this week assignment. Uh, at this week, I will give you guys two assignments. One is about how to set and retrieve the value in a mapping, in a mapping uh, variable. And the second thing is about uh, how to make a modifier, uh, which is the uh, which is the creator of the contract can only be used. Uh, I want this modifier can only used uh, can specific condition that the function can only be used by the contract creator. Okay, uh, so I will list uh, uh, the details about those two assignments on chain classes maybe. Okay, the, those are the full contents of uh, today's masterclass, I guess. So I will check about the Q&A part or, yeah, poster. Hi, can you listen to me? Okay, maybe I will check. Mm. Okay, I will check the question part. Mm, yeah, okay. At first is, there will be a recording of this class, of course, yeah. Please can a smart contract on testnet interweb with one on the mainnet? No, no, no. Uh, every, I guess uh, at, this person, at this environment, the mainnet and the testnet are independently. They can't connect with each other. So if then how can someone test a contract on testnet is the smart contract is a function on the mainnet? 
I guess there is no way or you can just uh, copy the same contract from the mainnet and put it on the test net, I guess. If the EVM is an isolated environment running in the node, it's not isolated, I guess, because the EVM is closely combined with the blockchain. Okay, all of the node and the block create one EVM. Okay, they just provide the basic uh, resources like calculation and the storage of the EVM. Did the chain ID allocate a safe project to use a wallet by using map method? Really interesting. Know how user data can be stored without your KYC. Okay. Uh, the chain ID will storage your data. Not not chain ID won't storage your data. You still your your contract data will just storage on your uh Chrome uh, file system. So uh, it will on the explorer, not on chain ID, not in chain ID. Okay. The maximum length of unsigned integer is two hundred and fifty and six. Okay, the OP codes. Okay, can you explain the OP codes? OP codes is if you code with the Solidity, right? Solidity is a high level language. But if you want the EVM to execute the language, it can't execute the Solidity. Solidity must com convert it by compiler to the OP codes. So, OP codes is a language that uh, EVM can read. A uh, different color, uh, which means different color. I guess there are just okay. The white color is the common, common, common variables like variable names or some uh, like if you defined a structure here, the struct will be the reserve word, but the, the struct name won't be. So uh, the name won't will be the white part, and if the part is blue then it should be a keyword like function, okay, like uint. Those are the keywords of the solidity. And about the green part, I guess, green part is the comments. Those comments won't be compiled by the compiler. Okay, so if you see some words in blue, then it won't be compiled. Okay, uh, you can use enum for the gender uh, selection. Or I, I just, because I think maybe some of the students uh, need some easily, simply uh, explain, explanation. So I use school here. Uh, maybe I can explain an example of modifier. Okay, okay, I, I, will, I will make some example here to uh, explain the modifier. Like here, okay. Uh, if I want to create a modifier, first thing is we need to use the modifier keywords, right? Okay. And we need to uh, specific the modifier name, like, if we want this modifier to just uh, uh, just use by just use by the by, by specific address, I guess. Okay. So I will use the 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 syntax that I put in put in the PPT.
Okay, in the only owner. Okay, uh, I, I use the requirement. I require. Okay, require keywords to set some conditions like uh, the message sender. Okay, what is message sender? The message sender is the one who creates this transaction. Like, like I interact with the contract, then I will be the message sender. Like this address will be the message sender. Okay, so the equal to the owner. Uh, then who is owner? I don't know who is owner. Can anyone can be the owner? Okay, I will do an our maybe I, I can set owner here. Okay, owner is the address. Okay, anyone can be the owner. But if you set this owner value to some specific address, then this uh, then and you, you use this modifier, then you will uh, this function can only use by specific address, I guess. Okay, so I, I will explain this part about this underscore uh, is it 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 on behalf of the sentence that the in the in the function like this this underscore on behalf of this part. I can say that. So if you want to use this only owner and to in, in, in the set information, so you can just put it here. Okay. So after after the visibility, you can use modifier to modify this function. Then and the comply and deploy and deploy it, then this function can only use by a specific address. Whose name is owner, uh, and you can set this value on other function or on the constructor. You can do that both. Okay, maybe I will select three more questions, uh, and if you have you have another questions, you can just fill it, fill them in the Google Doc, I guess. Uh, can I explain the mapping again? Okay, about the mapping, uh, mapping is a hash map structure data type. Like one is a key and the other is the value. You can use the key to search the value. Like you can, you can, you can search some home. There is a map, okay, there is a map that you, you have. And uh, like, you, I have a, a Wall Street first building. You, you know this address, right? And uh, you can find the, uh, the building by this address on the map. So that's hash map, I guess. I, I can tell you like this. How do I get Chain ID working on my computer? Okay, Chain ID is an online compiler environment. So, you can just log in the website and uh, use it. No, no need uh, other things. Uh, or, or, and maybe you need to have a wallet plug plugin. You can use it on Chrome. Uh, Chrome has MetaMask or Binance Wallet or some uh, wallet plugin. So with this basically requirement, you can use Chain ID just directly. How do we retrieve the get information data from another function? You can just put the get information, uh, this, this function, just put it in another function. Just use it. Like if you want to put it here, you can just get information. You just put it like this. And maybe you can equal to some A and B and C. Maybe like this. Yeah. How do we connect the front of application to blockchain? Is there some kinds of connector? Yeah. Uh, if we want to connect the front and the end, 
we, we, we can see the EVM as a computer, right? But it's a backend computer. So uh, you, you code with Solidity on EVM and your code is running on EVM, but it's backend. But you want to interact with it and uh, make a page. So you can use JavaScript or React or some structure to build a homepage and use a library called uh, Web3 of JavaScript. Then you can use the code to, in to interact with the so that the I will maybe I will introduce them uh, in uh, week seven maybe yeah. How can we add uh, value to fix the rate? You, you, you can't add, uh, you, can, you can assign, make assignment of the fixed array. You can't add some value, add, add uh, the legends of the fixed array. If you want to uh, make assignment of the fixed array, you can just do like this. If A is a fixed array, right? So uh, you want to assignment for the second position of the A, then you can use the subscript here and equal, use an equal symbol to put some, some value, I guess, if A is a uint array. Okay, uh, there are too many questions. Uh, maybe guys, I, I will see you uh, next week. And if you guys have another questions, uh, I will, you can put it on the Google Doc. Then I will check and uh, answer that. So maybe this is the end of uh, this week sharing and the masterclass. Uh, thank you guys for listening.